Hey, Joe Gilder here. In a recent video, I showed you behind the scenes of a new song from my band, specifically the recording and the mix of that song. Today, we're going to look at the master of that song, and I'll show you a preset that I used that I kind of fell in love with all over again. So if you're not familiar, the recording process can be loosely grouped into three categories, recording, mixing, mastering. Now you can do mixing and mastering. You can kind of blend those together where you do some mastering while you're mixing. I prefer to keep them separate and Studio One allows me to do that wonderfully because the mixing happens on the song page, which I'll show you is right here. And then the mastering happens over here on the project page. Now the two are connected internally. When I finished my mix, I told Studio One to create a new project or a new mastering session based off this mixing session. And now the two are internally connected. So if I stop and go back and change something in the mix, it automatically gets changed in the mastering session as well. That's super handy, super handy. You, no more like managing files manually. It all gets managed internally. So you, you won't accidentally be mastering mix two when you meant to be mastering mix three. Which is, which is super sad if you've ever been there. All right, so here is the mastering session. This is just a single, so there's only one song here. And you might notice I just don't have a lot going on here. I take a pretty hands-off approach to much of what I do. Um, and so the only plugins you'll find are a multiband dynamics, which is our multiband compressor, Pro EQ, and then down here is the Pro L2. This is a limiter from FabFilter that I really like for mastering. It's really it's one of the only third-party plugins I use, for real. Um, and if you don't have a third-party limiter, the limiter in Studio One will get the job done just fine. So you can see here, um, my Pro EQ is doing almost nothing. Tiny little boost here with some dynamic EQ on some of the higher-end frequencies, some sibilance that was still coming through on the master. But the one I want to show you is this. So this is the multiband dynamics plugin. I've talked about it before. Uh, if you've never played around with multiband dynamics... It's a little more on the advanced side of things, but once you understand what compression does, multiband is like another flavor of compression. So a typical compressor is compressing the entire signal. So if I record, uh, if I put an entire mix through the compressor, it's going to listen to the whole mix. It doesn't care which frequencies it's listening to. Whenever any frequency comes above the threshold, it's going to turn everything down. That's the idea. So if it's if you've ever had a mix where the, the, the kick drum is way too loud, if you ran that through a standard compressor, when the kick drum gets too loud, the compressor will turn things down. But it doesn't just turn the kick down, right? It's just working on the entire mix. So it turns the whole mix down every time the kick drum misbehaves. Now that's fine. That's called pumping. Sometimes that's a desirable sound. In a more, if it mix isn't super out of control where the kick is 10 times louder than everything else, then it becomes kind of a pleasant thing. The kick drum causes the whole thing to squish a little bit. That's nice. But sometimes it'd be nice to have a really loud kick drum that doesn't affect the compression happening in the mid-range or in the high frequencies. That's what multiband compression allows us to do. Instead of it being one compressor across all frequencies, it is essentially three compressors across three groups of frequencies. When you open multiband, it opens with five compressors, five different bands of frequencies, as you can see here. One, two, three, four, five. So the first thing that might be a little bit confusing uh, if you're new to this is it'll be, it's five bands of frequencies with four crossover frequencies. So the crossover is the point where it goes from one band to the next. So the default mode in multiband dynamics is five. I prefer three for specifically for what we're going to do today, which is using it across an entire mix in a mastering session. So the way to get rid of the lower bands is to just turn this one down and then turn this one down. So now we've got one, two, three bands. So this low and low mid, those are kind of inactive. So the mid band is technically the low band low, high, mid, and high. So there's a couple of things in the way I like to set this up, and I'll, I'll let you hear what it's doing. But the way I like to use a multiband compressor is I still use it as if it's a single, regular, old-fashioned compressor, but it just has three different bands. What I mean by that is I don't come in and adjust these settings individually when I'm using it for mastering. I don't have a different ratio attack and release for the low band compared to the mid and the high. In fact, I use this button here, edit all relative. That means when I move the ratio here for 
I'm in the middle band right now. If we click over to the others, it's the same. So the ratio stays the same across all of them. And I do that for everything, for the attack settings, for the ratio, for the release, and then for the threshold as well. I don't want it to be, I don't want it to be different compression settings for each group. I want them to all have similar settings, and then the compression between each group will be different because each group has a different has different stuff happening in it. What do I mean? Maybe I just confused you. Let's take a listen. The good thing about multiband dynamics is it lets you kind of feel your way into what's happening. So we can just listen to each band individually to figure out what's happening. So here is the song in its entirety. So we can go in and just listen to the low band. And we can see by looking at at this number right here, it's everything below 150 is the current definition of lows here. The mid band is everything between 150 and 1.2K, which sounds like this. And then the high band is actually 1.2K and up. So it's a big, big honking group of frequencies. Now in the past, here's what's what's fun for me. I've used the three band compressor, three brand, three band multi band compressor uh, in mastering lots over the last decade or so. And my typical setup is something like 160 and then like up around 3k. It's to where the the lows is everything below 160 and the highs are above 3k. So that means the mids have a lot more going on than what I just played for you. Here's the mids. But what happened for me is I actually changed this crossover to come down closer to 1K, and it seemed to do something magical to the sound. So real quickly, what's happening when we hit play and we let the compressor just go across this mix? If you have a pretty wide mid-range, which is the way I used to do it. I used to leave the highs as like everything above maybe 4K. Here's what happens. Let me hit play. If we turn off the audio for a second and just look, you can see, let's actually just go further back into the song. You can kind of just, by visually looking at it, you can see there is more energy in the mid-range frequencies than in the lows and the highs. If we had to rank them, this is first place, second place, third place. We can just see visually this top section is the input. We can see there's just more consistently more volume in the mid-range than the lows and the highs. That's important. So if the threshold is the same in all three bands and there's more volume in the middle band, what can we expect? We can expect the mid frequencies to get compressed more than the lows and the highs. So what ends up happening? What ends up happening is you get this almost scooped sort of sound to your master, as if you took an EQ and just carved out a big wide chunk of mid-range and gave it kind of that smiley face EQ curve that we've seen on like our dad's stereo system. Um, that's not necessarily bad or good, it just is. And it that's what ends up happening. If we listen to it now, you'll hear it has this sound of the mid-range being scooped out. It's got a little brighter in the top end, a little deeper in the low end, and like that snare drum and the warmth of the guitars all got pushed down a little bit. Again, it's not necessarily bad, but I always found myself not liking that sound on most mixes, and I found myself wanting to change it um, and change the way that it worked, to the point where I went through a season where I just didn't use multiband because I felt like... If the mix was really mid-heavy, then multiband fixed it for me. But if it was a pretty balanced mix, I felt like multiband made it feel more scooped and have less mids than before, which gave it the, the end result being it felt a little harsh maybe. It was missing that all that beautiful warmth that comes in the mid-range. Well, here's, here's what I did. I was working on this master, and I noticed that as is the case most of the time, there's more mid-range stuff than high frequencies. So I started to think, well, why don't I, why don't I make them more even? Why don't I move this frequency band down until the highs and the mids feel a little more balanced, a little more like they're about the same volume? Check that out. 
It's not going to be perfect, but now the mids and the highs are kind of staying in the same ballpark volume-wise, and the lows, they're all about the same. They're going to be different because the low end is going to jump up with the kick drum every time. Um, the high frequencies, when the cymbals come in, they're going to jump up more. But in general, looking at this average level, that to me looks and feels a little more, or it, lo it looks at least, who, I don't know what it sounds like yet, that looks a little more balanced to my ear. So now, instead of the mids getting all the compression, the lows and highs, it's kind of more evenly distributed. We didn't mess with the lows, but we split the difference between the mids and the highs. If we go like this, the mid range has a whole lot more volume than the highs. But if we go find that spot where they're kind of even, which is down here around 1K, now we're treating them more evenly. Let's just see what that sounds like. I'm going to start up here and roll it down. See if you can hear the difference um, in the sound of the the way that mid-range sounds on this. Oh man, that's fascinating. So I'm going to do it again. I'm going to jump up here to like 3K and then back to 1K. Just kind of loosey-goosey jump back and forth. You can hear it, the snare drum is kind of the key to this. Listen specifically to the snare. Here we go. Man, I get... I get goosebumps when this stuff happens. I want to explain it and do it in a way that feels pretty obvious because I know sometimes this stuff can be subtle and that's frustrating, especially if you're starting out. Um, but that to me felt pretty obvious. When I moved it up to where there was more information in the mid-range frequencies, the snare just got killed because it was, it was all this sound. That's pretty much the whole of the snare sound was in that range, plus all the guitars and the other stuff. So the snare got pushed to the back and got lost. By coming over here and balancing them out down closer to one, a little over 1K, the snare became punchy again. The brightness of the snare came through. And to my ear, thinking about mid-range and the high frequencies, those two felt more even and balanced than out of balance this way. And I think we'll still find that even from here to having just no multiband at all, because your question might be, well, if you're making it completely even, then why do multiband at all? It's a good question. Let's see what it sounds like before and after the multiband here. There's definitely a little more volume with the multiband because I do have about 2 dB of gain here. That's, that's skewing the results a little bit. But what I felt was the low end tightened up, which is hard to do if you're going to have a full, full range compressor because it's going to start pumping all the high frequencies. The low end was able to tighten up, and then the mids and the highs are just a little bit, little bit tighter without one outshining the other. I like that a lot. Let's listen to it over here in this kind of breakdown section. <laughs> pretty good. If we turn it off, it pulled everything forward a little bit without anything sounding overly out of control. When you push everything into, say, a limiter or a compressor, and you're trying to just goose it a little bit more, if it's just a single limiter across all frequencies or a single compressor all, over all frequencies, it very quickly you can hear it working because it's having to work across the entire frequency range, which is a pretty kind of a mean task to give it. That's hard to do. Now, a good limiters will do it pretty well, but you can ease the job on the limiter by saying having a, a three-band compressor that's going to tame each of those groups individually so they're a little more, little more balanced, a little more evenly distributed when it hits the limiter, and it all kind of works together to create this really interesting, good-sounding uh, mastering session. So the lesson here is not to copy my exact settings, 
but the mindset behind it. I like three bands. And then maybe de- it may be song dependent. From one song to the next, you may find moving this crossover frequency until you've got a nice, even, balanced distribution between mids and highs will allow that multiband to act in such a way that enhances the music and doesn't like shut down your mids or emphasize your highs too much. Now, I know this was covered a lot of ground here. This is a little more advanced than I normally like to do, but I was just so excited about these settings. I wanted to share it with you. Thanks for watching. My name is Joe Gilder. I'll see you in the next one.